So today we're back onto the battlefields of World War One with my trusty Martini Henry. This is a game called Tannenberg, and it's made by the same team that built Verdun. In fact, Tannenberg is a standalone expansion of Verdun, and it's just left early access on Steam. I think it was either late last week or early this week. The devs gave me a code for the game, so I thought I'd go and check it out, and I didn't realise that my favourite weapon in World War I was part of it, and I've now spent the best part of the last two hours running around wrecking people with this thing. It's really good fun. But Tannenberg isn't really your usual run-of-the-mill first-person shooter. There's this really big emphasis on era authenticity, and that massively changes the gameplay experience. But despite this, the dev team have created a really fun game, I think. The game itself is inspired by the Battle of Tannenberg in 1914. That took place about a month or so after the beginning of World War I. The game is set on the Eastern Front, and the developers have pitched it as this era-authentic shooter, pretty much as era-authentic as you can get. You've got accurate uniforms and equipment, weapons, maps, locations, and even multiple armies as well. If you've put much time into Verdun, then you're going to feel right at home here because the game follows on from that and it's sort of the next step forward for the work being done by the development team. Now, having spent a little bit of time playing Verdun myself in the past, I can say that the improvements overall here in Tannenberg are definitely felt. The game feels smoother and it allows gameplay to flow a little bit more, which is great. One of my biggest gripes with Verdun was that it did feel quite clunky and sometimes you'd feel like the game was was holding you back almost and you'd get shot and killed as a consequence and that really didn't make for a great gameplay experience every single time you played. A lot of those annoyances have been eliminated with the work that's gone into Tannenberg so a big GG to the dev team there for, for working hard and ironing out some of those kinks. Instead of the usual allied forces that you'd find on the Western Front, like the British Army, the French Army, and various others, here in Tannenberg you've got bigger roles for other armies, like the Russians, the Romanians, the Austro-Hungarians and the Germans that make up the Central Powers, and even the Bulgarian Army as well, they're in this game too. You can get up to 64 players in a server playing the game modes on offer, but the main mode, and the one I want to talk about, is called Maneuver. I'm really starting to enjoy this game mode. Basically, you either start off on the Central Powers or on Taunt Faction, and you have to push into the map and capture sectors of it, and they're linked back to your faction's headquarters. To capture a sector, you have to have a soldier majority within the capture zone, which is a location within the sector itself, but it's marked on the minimap for you, so you don't have to go looking too hard for it. The bigger the majority of soldiers that you have in that capture zone, the faster you're going to capture it. Now, some of the sectors have special abilities attached to them, and the team that holds those, they can use them against the enemy. So there are artillery locations that can be used to call in strikes on the map, and there's ammo caches as well that you can resupply from. There's even a signal station that will activate a recon plane that flies over and it reports the enemy activity within a certain sector. And that can be really helpful when you're sort of pushing into an enemy held sector and you need a bit of guidance about where their soldiers are going to be. The more sectors you hold over the enemy, the faster you're going to whittle away their reinforcements. And to win, you've got to reduce the enemy reinforcements to zero or the timer will run out. And you can also end the match by capturing the enemy team's headquarters, although to do that, you need a really big focused attack to make it happen. This kind of game mode with different sectors spaced all over the map, it really does spread out the combat more so than in the previous game for Dunn. That was definitely focused more so around different trenches, front lines and that linear backwards and forwards movement, very representative of what the Western Front was like during World War I. Tannenberg, on the Eastern Front, it's definitely a more open version. Maps feel like they span a much larger area, I'm not sure if the maps are actually bigger or not, but they definitely feel bigger, and the combat can be happening all over the place at the same time. And coming from a franchise like Battlefield, I adjusted to the maneuver game mode almost instantly. I knew what I had to do within a couple of minutes, and I felt comfortable with the mechanics of the mode as well. 
With the combat in Tannenberg being a little bit more open and the gameplay flow being more secular, that closely matches the combat that kind of occurred on the Eastern Front during World War I. It wasn't this muddy, wet stalemate that was dominated by trench warfare. There are of course trenches on the Eastern Front and those are represented here in Tannenberg, but just looking at those trenches here compared to the previous game, the ones in Tannenberg are far less deep. It was a moving war with the Central Powers and the Entente pushing back against one another on the Eastern Front for almost the entire four years of the war. You're going to find less of those deep trenches that were almost ubiquitous in the first game. That kind of combat just isn't anywhere near as common in Tannenberg, and I actually like the game more because of that. It isn't all about dominating just one single line of sight anymore and then mowing down enemies as they charge over the top and try and take over your trench. It's about holding ground now, being aware of different flanking routes and then pushing up when the time is right. But the thing that really impresses me about Tannenberg and the work that's been done by the development team is their attention to detail. Just like Verdun, the authentic uniforms that the soldiers are wearing are as accurate as far as they can be in a video game. Weapons are modelled with really high levels of detail and the maps chosen for the game use proper layouts from the battles fought in those locations and they use proper props found in those locations as well. When you look at other games on the market that have chosen to forego this approach in favour of player customization, you forget what a proper World War I battle might have looked like, and you lose that appreciation for the equipment and the weaponry that the soldiers had to use. Over a hundred years ago, weapons were just as clunky as hell. Items were adapted and used in whatever form they could be used in to try and get a leg up over the enemies that you were fighting. And it wasn't until later on in the war that innovation really started to creep in. I mean, if you take this Martini Henry rifle, for example, the length of reload time is a massive drawback. But the raw power of the black cartridge is just awesome. You only get to fire one bullet before you have to reload. You can't just reload the thing in the blink of an eye either. It took a lot more time, but that is shown in Tannenberg. When you fire that shot, you've got to be prepared to wait for the next shot to be ready, and you've got to know if enemies are around you who might come and try and take you down. And my favourite map has got to be this one that I'm showing you right now. This is called East Prussia, and it's basically Tannenberg the map. It's this far-stretching map that's covered in tall trees that create these clusters of combat zones through the trunks, towards and in between objectives. So you get these really tense moments where you know someone's shooting at you, but you can't quite see them because they might be like 10, 12, 15 tree trunks away. They've got a line of sight on you, but where you're looking is not quite the direction. And so you think you're safe, but you're actually not. There is plenty of cover on this map, but there's so many angles that you have to consider that it's almost mandatory to stick with your teammates and move in groups for safety. If somebody gets picked off, then you've probably got a general idea where that threat is coming from, and then you can counter it. But if you are wiped out by an enemy squad that's moving up, it's probably because you weren't in cover properly. The map just feels like one of those iconic settings from World War I, and when everyone is using bolt-action rifles, one missed shot can really be the difference between life and death for you. There's this constant threat, and something about that makes this map really, really engaging. If I'm being brutally honest with you all, I wasn't expecting to have as much fun playing Tannenberg as I ended up having, but... That to me is what makes this game such a good deal at the moment, it's just $20 on Steam. That's about £15 or €15. Euros. I didn't expect Tannenberg to be a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, I played the previous game, Verdun, and I really enjoyed that one as well, but when a game is produced by a smaller team who have to work with smaller development budgets, your expectations are always going to be that little bit lower. I think a lot of gamers, including myself, we're spoilt by these big AAA games that come out and deliver so much in one package. So I think it's a credit to the team that they've made something that is actually really, really engaging. It runs well on my PC, it, it does what it says on the tin, and it costs just $20. And it comes with five multiplayer maps, six different armies, over 30 weapons, a few game modes, and it even has AI bots so that you can play the game anytime you want, even if there's not a server running in your region. 
This isn't a sponsored message or anything, but I genuinely believe that Tannenberg is worth your $20. If you like a slightly slower, more lethal first-person shooter experience, then this is a game I think should be on your radar, and if you've got the money, you should give it a go. If you want to check it out, I've linked the game down on Steam in the description for you. But there you are, that's Tannenberg. I might post a few more videos over the next few weeks on this game, so if you like this one, let me know in the comments. If you couldn't tell by the commentary, I really do like this game, so maybe using it in some War Stories videos, maybe telling some really awesome stories from the World Wars, that could be something quite cool, so let me know if you're interested in that. But thanks very much for watching today. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel with notifications switched on so you don't miss any of my future videos. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.